All uh, right. Good morning, everyone. This is your Mind, Body, Soldier prayer call. We um, have just wrapped up the Just Enough Light for the step I'm on. This book was so good. I feel like I'm going to keep returning back to it. Because um, I, I liked at the end how she just tied in talking about like how we tend to focus on the past and then the next chapter was like how do we stay in the present um and then what do we look to in the future um and so it's just like i feel like this book was just very calming to me <laughs> so i appreciated that in in my day-to-day -day because uh with everything that I have going on and like stuff starting to open up or ramp up in different ways right now. It's like starting to get back to busier um, schedule. And I, it helps me focus to figure out like, okay, what do I actually wanna spend my time doing? So I'm not just busy doing a lot of things, but I'm actually doing things that I enjoy or I'm adding value to. Um, but at the beginning of this last chapter, I really loved this line. And she says, um, God, uh, God has so much for us. We have no idea. We look for crumbs under the table and he has prepared a feast for us in the Royal Banquet Hall. Like, oh, right? It just hits you in the gut. Like, oh my gosh, I'm always here like searching for what I think is the greatest thing. And it's really just leftover crumbs on the table and God's like hello your seats in the the royal hall next door <laughs> I have a grand feast prepared for you right isn't that just like such a crazy image to have in your head and you're like oh okay God like I see you repeat that again <laughs> if you can Michelle yeah um we look for crumbs under the table he has prepared a feast for us in the royal banquet hall that's incredible yeah I, I love the line. It. you know you I said what a way of looking at it yeah it just like immediately like puts me back into perspective like oh, okay yeah I can have these grand plans but anything that I dream up is really, you know, crumbs in comparison to what God has planned for it. It's so true. We always, we always, uh, you know, underestimate ourselves, right? I always look at it as in like, um, instead of, we think we're dreaming big, but really we're dreaming so small, like dream bigger. And I remember Jack even like, she, she did a, uh, like a, uh, kind of like an exercise. Um, I didn't know it was an exercise, but I thought it was just a conversation, you know, tricky, tricky Jack. Um, and yeah. she, I don't even know if she'll remember this, but she was like, well, what's your dream? Like, what's your dream? And I really felt like I didn't know what dream, like how to dream. Like I didn't know, like, well, like I, I being put on the spot, like kind of thing. I was like, I don't know. So I would tell, I told her something. I can't even remember what it was at the time. And she goes, okay, well, how about this? And she like basically 10 X my dream. Like she took my little small crumb and was like, bam, like over here. I was like, oh, whoa. Like I didn't even, she's like, well, why, why, why do you think, why are you like underestimating yourself? Like you're like, you are going to do big things. Like, why aren't you dreaming big? I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I guess I was just happy with my little crumbs. I was just like, but, but why wouldn't I want this over? Why wouldn't I want the feast in the other room? Why? Who wouldn't want that? I, I know exactly how you feel. Cause I think a lot of it has stemmed from just me being taught, um, you know, like be humble in what you do and all these things. Right. And so I'm like, okay, like this is enough for me. Like, this is great. But God's like, no, like you can be grateful. Like this was in another line I liked in a previous chapter. Um, so you can be grateful for what you have right now, 
but that doesn't mean that God has something even better for you in the future. Exactly. So, it's the whole mentality yeah. of settling, right? Like mm -hmm. I was a very, I was very comfortable in settling with what I had. Like this is great, and I'm going to learn to be happy with this, and learn to be grateful for what this is, and it was almost like I didn't want to take anything for granted. Like, just don't, don't be selfish. And yeah. instead of thinking it was being selfish, it was, why are you wanting more for yourself? There's nothing wrong with keep, with your path, keep moving. Like, it's almost like I felt like, well, this is where I, with, this is where I, uh, this was my goal. This is what I've accomplished. And now that's it. Well, that's depressing. Yeah. At 30, like, that's it. Like, why did I feel <laughs> Now it just boggles my mind that I thought that way. And I was totally comfortable with that at 30, thinking that way, until I was challenged to think, well, what? your journey never ends. Like God's plan for you doesn't just stop. Like yeah. you've got a whole journey ahead and all these things that you're going to accomplish. And it's like, wow, okay. Like you said, I'm grateful as every step that I, that I take with God, mm -hmm. I am grateful for, and I, and I am appreciative and I keep moving though. It's not like, that's it. I'm on the last step. That's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. And then that's what God wants us to do is keep pushing forward. Cause he does. It's like every step he gives us what we need yep. for that to grow in those ways so that he knows we can take on these future steps. And we'll be, have the capability and just like have the mindset to do it. Um, but yeah, it's like, it, it's never too late for God to introduce something new, like a new role into your life, which is just like mind boggling to think. Cause I feel even in my short time of life so far, like I have done and accomplished so many things. So I'm like, well, God, like, what do you have planned for the future? Because this is going to be bonkers. <laughs> I honestly think, like, it makes the journey so much, like, it, it makes it so much more when, when reading this book, it, it, may, it puts me in a perspective of, like, being able to um, see those uh, things that God shows us with those steps, like, being present enough within, within today to notice them and see where he's like stretching us and growing us for that next step makes it like so much more bigger instead of just going through the motions. Cause like sometimes you get caught up in life and you're going through the motions. God's still working over here. Even if you don't realize and you're not present, mm -hmm. but you're taking that next and you're like, Whoa, where, what just happened? Where did I, how did that happen? And how did I get here? Because you, you get caught up in your, in your, life and you're getting caught up in everything around you when you slow down and you see them it's it just i i get full body goosebumps thinking about it like when you're totally present in 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 your journey it brings such a a, a enlightening peace like an enlightening feeling like uplifting it just it really brings the power to to your life like in god's presence within it like yeah as you were talking, I was reminded of, I don't know if you've ever had an experience when you're driving and it's like a route that you go normally. And so it's like you get in the car, you get all prepped and ready. And then all of a sudden you're like, realize you've arrived at your destination and you like have no memory of the journey in between. And so as you're talking, I was like, wow, that is such like a good image for me to think about because like you said, you get caught in the motions you're present, like you're safe and driving, but it's like your mind is thinking about other things along the way. And so you're not taking in all the senses and all the sights around you. And then all of a sudden you're, it's like jarring feeling because you get to your destination and you're like, how the heck did I get here? But if you're actually paying so, attention so and looking in your mirrors and like looking at the sign on the side of the road and all the things around you, you're taking all that in and so when you get there you're like oh I know where I came from I know the signs that I saw the things that I learned like the person that I avoided who was driving crazy like I'm aware of all of that and now I'm here and it's just like more peaceful it's so true um like I think about it as in like 
muscle memory, the way muscle memory works as we grow, as we get older at, from a child to an adult, we have learned behaviors like we like that's a common right common knowledge so you yeah. you learn to walk and then you don't think about walking you learn the practice of eating and you don't think about eating right you don't think about that it's something that you don't need to think about because you it's a learned behavior and it's a routine over and over and over again you've done it so many times like driving can be that way too you know because you know how to drive you know where you're going you're not thinking about that, but your brain's still thinking. You're thinking about other things. You're thinking about, okay, what am I gonna make for supper? Or who's gonna be home today? Or uh, what are my plans for this evening? So you're thinking about all the other things in the act of doing something else. When you take that away, when you, when you clear your mind and you, like you said, you, I'm gonna enjoy the drive. I'm gonna pay attention to the tree. I'm gonna pay attention to that house that I know that I drive by all the time, but check out their yard. I haven't seen that before. Like you start to pay attention mm -hmm. and then you're like, wow, I had such a peaceful drive. It brings such peace. I came to that knowledge, well, that way of thinking with Darren and his stroke. So, you know, as you teach your child the simple acts of grow getting like growing up and the importance of like walking, tying your shoe, all of this thing, the things you forget you already know, and then teaching it to an adult as an adult. So it's like, ooh, like I don't think about what, what Darren's brain needs to think when he goes for a walk. Like your arms sway naturally. Do you, like no one walks with their arms straight, not moving, right? Yeah. Like, your yeah. arms sway with the motion of your feet. And then your feet are hip distance apart when you're walking. They're not close, they're not wide. Like, and, and you're, you're, it's just everything that your brain already was wired to do but take that away and now try to rewire it it was mm -hmm. like oh my god yeah. and I, it was such a transition to be present and like bringing me back to the basics and yeah. then seeing that come about with him is like whoa cool because everything is spatial too like your eyes play into into mm -hmm. it as well they have a major role in creating that distance and space proximity to where you're going and where you're walking yeah and you take one thing out of the out of it and then something changes right but it just exactly. i'm getting off a little bit off track sorry but it brings me back to that being present in the moment of the action and like so going out for a walk being it brings it brings the whole clarity to being present in the moment when you think about it i want to be present in the walk i don't want to be thinking about something else I don't want to be thinking about all of that because I want to be in the moment. Like I want to, mm -hmm. and then it really brought me able to do that with Darren. Cause it's so like, you don't think about it. Right. As we get older, like, you know, I'm going to, I know I'm going to go for a walk, but now my brain's going to be thinking about all the other things while I'm doing something else. It's like, we're always in the multitask mode, our brains. Mm -hmm. I find that. Yeah. And it's interesting because people, I feel like a lot in our society is, um, people want or even get praise for being able to multitask well, but really our brains can't multitask on two things at once. You can just like switch quickly between two tasks, but then you're really not giving your full attention and effort into any of the things that you're approaching and doing. So I think that's a good reminder because I feel, yeah, just with like our busy lifestyle society, like that's what has become praised and become normal. Um, and so that's why like I've been appreciative of this whole pandemic season because it's like we're forced to be slow down and simplify things in our lives. And just like, like I said at the beginning, figure out what, I really want in my life and what I want to focus on and spend my energy and time on and um, like just stay true to that instead of trying to go in so many different directions because of other people's expectations. So that's a really, that's, that's a really good point, Michelle, you know, through this pandemic too, like I've been, I've been really thinking about what routines that I have created like before the pandemic and after, and I really started thinking about how different I feel 
with those routines. Like I think I, I function in a, I have to way instead of I want to way. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really realize that even though I enjoyed the routine still, and I still thrive on routine, my brain was still feeling a little bit resentful, like with some of the routines, like I felt like I have to still. Yeah. Since the pandemic, I really, I really pushed away all of the things that I thought I had to do and brought in the things that I want to do. And a lot of them still were there. A lot of this still, but the mentality behind it changed. Mm-hmm. And it really came with some of the books we've been reading, like I swear, because bringing in this book, actually, just not like the stuff I'm on, like this book this month, like, wow, it really made me like strip away. Yeah. And, and really, really pay attention to like, I've created this because I, this is what, what I want and what I need. And, and I, I love that behind it. Like there was nothing, there's no, there's no pressure. There's no, there's no telling, no one telling me I have to do something. Yeah. And it makes me enjoy it more. Like I get up at this time because I want to, and I know how good I feel. And then I, I do this next thing because I want to do this. And this is what, where it's going to bring me to my next step. And it's, I just, I, I find such a peace in the, that way of, of, of thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I totally agree. It's been such a good book. We've had really just a good series with yeah. all of these books and Story. leading into our next one. Yeah, Stormy is a great author and just like the style and even like the structure of the chapters allows us to read kind of step by step and keep it simple instead of like, okay, I have to read like 25 pages today and blah, blah, blah. But just taking that topic and having the time just to focus and wrap your mind around it and really implement it into your life. Um, So this next one that we'll be starting on chapter one tomorrow um, the power of a praying woman, and actually my bookmark matches it. Oh, that's so great! Um, this one I'm excited about because basically I was uh, reading the introduction this morning, and I, being someone who loves to help people and serve people, like that comes naturally to me, and I think for you as well, Trace, is that even in our prayer life, we're like, okay, we're going to pray for this person and this person, and like, this is going on. So like, let's keep that in mind. And, but we forget to pray for ourselves. And so this book, I think is going to be powerful for us because it's pointing that back and focusing on ourselves in our prayer. Um, really because I know like September, I'm just going to cry the whole month while I'm reading this book. <laughs> yeah. Cry. So like, I probably will too. I'm like, okay, you like, to cry this whole month. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good though, because I mean, it's hard to turn that focus back on yourself, right? When you are so focused on serving other people you know, you want to be a good person and you love and you care about these people. So you genuinely want what's best for them and you want healing for them. And so it's like our minds just directly go to that. But why also want that for ourselves? I don't know so, what, what it's been, but I think for the longest time in my life, I always felt like it was selfish. Like I always associated with asking for something for yourself is selfish. Mm-hmm. Like you don't ask of anything, which is such a backwards way of thinking if you think about it and the yeah. again jack i think it was one of our like a, one of our when we first started doing prayer call morning prayer call before we incorporated our our book um we would just come on and pray every morning and i wasn't a, a prayer a person that prayed out loud and hearing jack and then hearing her pray for herself i never thought it was strange i never it never once made me think like oh why is she praying for herself i think that's selfish See, that's the funny thing. But then as soon as I did, it was like, oh, this doesn't feel right. Like, I don't feel comfortable, like, asking God to do this for me or do that for me. And Jack was like, you have to ask him specifically for what you need and what you want. Otherwise, how does he know? How are you going to get what you need or what you want for your life? I was like, ooh, you're asking for everybody else, but why are you asking for yourself? You should be number one. And then I was like, I've never thought of it like that. (laughs) 
I know it's crazy. And in my mind, it's like, okay, I know, I know what I need already, but in me bringing it forth in that way and praying for it and asking for it myself, the way that the human mind works, like then it's more present in your own mind. And then you're able to see when you're going throughout the rest of your things in your day-to-day -day tasks, you're able to take little actions and steps toward making those happen, or your eyes are open to more opportunities or maybe a person that you wouldn't really have taken much time to talk to before, but they say something that relates to that and you're like, Ooh, and then all of a sudden it's this connection that like totally takes you down the path that you're meant to be on. Um, and so it just keeps that in your brain for yourself and allows you to like work that into your daily life and work that into your, your goals and the steps that you're taking. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited for this book. Um, There was a line in here. So she's talking about um, Stormy saying like, she was always praying for other people, um, but didn't pray about her own walk with God. And she says this line that I liked. She's like, I was busy doing good and neglected to do what was best. So she's talking about how um, she became the Martha instead of Mary without even realizing it. And I was like, oh. So yeah, in that story in the Gospels, it's, right, like you're busy doing like, okay, I have to prepare this food for them. And like, you know, the, the people are here and I have to take care of Jesus and like do all these things. But you're not actually being with him and joining in community with him and sitting and learning and developing that relationship. Because you're so busy running around doing everything else. And I was like, oh, again, another like gut check. I'm like, oh my gosh, natural, like, put such a great I a Like I want to be a hostess for everybody. Like, okay, what do you need? How can I help? Like, how can I serve you? Like, how, what can I get for you? Like, that's my nature. Like, okay. And I get, like, I get a pleasure in that. Like I get a pleasure in your pleasure, like in your happiness. Like, so if you're happy, I'm happy. Like that's, isn't that so weird? Not weird. It's natural. No, but I'm, isn't that so yeah. ass backwards? Like, I know my happiness doesn't depend on you, but I get happiness when you're happy. It fulfills me. It makes me feel uh, my heart's full. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I've done yeah. a good thing. Like, I, I, it makes me feel complete a little bit, you know? That one thing. Okay. You know what? Um helped me just perspective wise with that is that you know like if you're hosting a party or something and one of your friends or family members comes up like what can I help you with like give me something to do that I can help and so many times before I was like oh no like you go enjoy your time like I got it and then I'm in the kitchen like stressed out and like have so many things and I'm like working on the timeline get everything ready but when we take that away from people it's like we're taking away their opportunity to feel the joy from helping us and so when i think about it in that way i'm like oh they want to help and they you know it can be fun to interact and just like be in the kitchen or getting these tasks done together um so it's time for us to bond too and then they get like you said get that joy and happiness from helping me and i get to do that for them as well and so it's okay. so true michelle like so we're so alike in that way so thinking exactly what you're saying us wanting to be the hostess and being like oh no 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 like you just enjoy but if we are the the the, the guest we're like what can i do and we get joy in helping like we want to help mm -hmm. so when you're telling us no then you feel like oh like oh like you i feel i feel like i'm not I'm not contributing. I feel like I could contribute to help. Like, I, you know, I want to, I want to ease your, your, your anxiety or your stress, or I want to be, you know, I want to be helpful. And then when you're told no, it's like, Oh, like you're take they're taking a little bit of my joy. Right. Like, why don't I think about like, Okay. I'll just go sit over here. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. I know it's 
so not natural for me to operate like that, but I have to like intentionally remind myself because I'm like, okay, other people get joy from helping too, Michelle. Like, let them help. It's okay. <laughs> but I think, again, a lot of just things and situations that have happened over the past like year, I've really had to learn to like humble myself in that way and lean into my support system and you know, whatever situation it is, if it's a dinner party or it's like life things and finances and stuff like that, like really allow people to help me when I need help and not get stuck in just like my pride and my ego about it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I can only imagine what more gut checks that we're going to have during this book. Oh, yeah. As I'm flipping oh, through. Are in for a treat. Oh man, but yeah, I, I am excited about it. Yes. Um, I, let's wrap up with prayer. I think I'm going to read first the paragraph from the last chapter of our previous book. Let me get to it. Okay. Lord, I ask you to be in charge of my future. I don't want to dream dreams if you are not in them. I don't want to make plans that you will not bless. I don't want to work hard trying to harvest something that will never bear fruit because I did not receive seed from you. Help me not to waste valuable time getting off the path and having to come back to the same place again. I don't want to get to the end of my life and regret the time I spent not living for you. Therefore, I surrender my past, present, and future to you now. Help me not to be anxious about my future, but to rest in the knowledge that my future is secure in you. I want to keep one foot in eternity by never letting go of your hand. I want to store up so many treasures in heaven that heaven will feel familiar the moment I arrive. And when I do take that final step into my future, my eternal future with you, I trust that you will be there for me with all the light I need for that step too. Lord, I thank you as always for another day that we are alive and breathing and joining together in community with you. You have blessed me so much with these women in my life and um, just our growth and our conversations and our journey together closer to you, Lord. Um, so I pray that that continues and we are able to touch other women's lives um, with this community as well as you have envisioned for it. Uh, I want to continue to pray for uh, Sean and I and our relationship, especially as you better our communication, as we continue to build this foundation of our relationship, growing closer together and closer to you. I also want to pray for continued um, health and guidance as all of us are continuing to um, finish up preparations for our women's retreat. And we place that in your hands, Lord, that whatever that is supposed to look like and turn out to be, um, that it will be your vision and your purpose that will permit. I also uh, would like to pray for our dear Linda um, and just healing for her and her thumb. Um, that you may give her healing and freedom from pain and peace in this situation. I also um, just want to pray over our whole Mind, Body, Soldier tribe that as we are journeying through our roles um, as significant others, as um, spouses, family members, parents, we have so many roles that we hold and that you have created for us, God. Um, but I ask that you allow us to find peace in all of those, um, that we may know the next steps that you have planned for us, and that we may be grateful and content with knowing um, and having just the, the light that we need for this step in our, in our life and in our journey. Tracy? Ooh, dear Lord, good morning. I wanna thank you this morning, first off, for the last two wonderful days that I got to spend with friends and family. Um, and again, showing, showing us miracles in your ways with Darren and just 
seeing those lightful moments of him just like being himself, being in his, in his comfort and in his natural habitat and him just enjoying things that he loves to do. And me, I receive so much joy seeing you work through him. Um, so just keep bringing those moments to us, keep bringing the patience that is needed for me to um, help nurture that relationship, nurture him in a way that is going to help him grow um, independently and just in the, in the time frame that you see fit. Um, I also want to just send some special extra prayers for our girl, Susan. Just this week, she's going to be parenting those boys alone and just give her some peace and guidance, help her find some answers, and just with her, her boy Nick, and just help him, um, just help find some solutions and some answers and give her peace and remind her that she's got her entire tribe with her, us girls and ladies there at any moment. She needs to just reach out and just, you know, ask for some help in any which way we can, we'll be there for her. Just help guide her hand and her mind and her heart. Uh, I also want to send some extra prayers out to my nieces. They're embarking on this new school year and it's going to be so different from the past years, but that's okay. Help, help guide them, help, help bring them some peace, calm their anxiousness and anxieties coming into this new year and just remind them that you're with them, remind them that they'll get through this and that they're so much capable more than they even realize. And in Jesus' name we pray. Oh, look at those people here. <laughs> Does anybody else want to add to prayer? <laughs> I will add to prayer. <laughs> okay, hold on. Oh. Good morning, Lord, Heavenly Father. I think it's very curious that I was trying to avoid the prayer call, and Lord, you did not have that happen. I hopped on at 1030 thinking I missed it, and um, here I am ready to pray. So I know that, Lord, that's where you want me to be. First, I wanted to say thank you for this ladies on the tribe. Thank you for Tracy for praying over me. And yes, I want to pray over Nicholas as he continues to um, just exhibit behaviors that show us that he just needs, his communication needs met. I pray that the right resources, the right articles, the right people, the right solutions um, will come to us this week. Um, I also pray for strength and patience with me and for energy on those tired days, but also um, pray to look outside my world and all the things that are going on because um, it's easy to get absorbed, Lord, in our problems, and I don't want to be do that. I want to look to other people. So um, I'm not going to let me bring me down. I'm going to have an amazing day today. I want to pray for Don as he travels. He's flying to Denver and then to Seattle. So to keep him safe. Um, I want to pray for Lincoln today as she um, goes through a loan process this morning and um, she moves to her next transition. She's giving her notice at her work today. So um, Lord, keep her heart um, happy. She had a really tough day on Friday and today I hope she's seeing the light. And oh, I think Jacob doesn't need any prayers, but everyone needs prayers. He's doing awesome. Lord, so still keep him on the path that he is bringing me happiness and joy. And thank you so um, much for him. I want to pray for, um, yeah, all the members of our tribe um, as they head back in this new season. I think September is a time of renewal, Lord, and always remembering your love and grace. And I'm just so grateful that you are in my life and that I have you as a resource because I'm not drowning, Lord. I'm getting through, and it's all because of the strength in you and not in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Also, I think that's so beautiful that you were trying to avoid this call, Susan, and here we are. <laughs> and I were I like, away well, it's safe we now. It's so. yeah. God knew. I was like, oh, they're right on prayer. So, yeah, good timing. That was perfect. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, we are starting um, The Power of a Praying Woman, Chapter 1, tomorrow. So join us for that and our continued prayer calls um, at 9.30 Eastern Time every morning. And we're happy.